So I have been thrilled to see that you have been tidying up, not just tidying up in your studio, but you tell me around your house, you've been tackling those areas that have been sitting there way too long, spots in the kitchen where stuff piles up, the dining room, the living room, the bedroom nightstand, yeah. Yeah, I'm Pat Sloan, thank you for being here. This is my fireside chat on Monday night and I've got a little talk about a new bobbin holder I found, talk about our sew-alongs, uh, give you a status on my UFO project that I said I'd work on last Friday when I did UFO Friday, so I have actually worked on one of them. But first I wanna do a snack chat. I love the Halloween season because you get these bags of small size candies. I think that Halloween does that better than anybody else. I mean, some of these aren't, like these particular ones aren't packaged, you know, sealed packaged so that you could hand them out. But they're, they're actually candies. These Hershey little minis have been around forever. And when I saw them, I had to get a bag because my dad always had these. Um, I'm gonna have to take them over next time I, I go and show him and see if he remembers. But he would have these. We lived in Europe and so my mom would pick them up at the PX or the commissary and she would bring them home and dad would pretty much have to hide them from us three kids. So I have two younger brothers and uh, these were his. We were not supposed to eat them and he liked to keep them in the fridge or the freezer. So these bring back great memories and I just love that they now call these shareable bags. It's like, really? Who are we sharing these with? If you're my dad, nobody. They were his. <laughs> so, so does your family have one of those kind of stories where there's a particular food, your mom or your dad, it was like, no, this is just my food. You know, you would not like this or you can't have this. Although I think he would give us the dark chocolates anytime we wanted them. <laughs> I don't think anybody wanted the dark chocolates. Probably my mom ate them. <laughs> I like the ones with the nuts. The ones that called the, the Mr. Good Bar. Yeah, those are my favorites. And we're all kind of a chocolate and nut family. And my uh, my stepmom, she just loves anything with chocolate and nuts. So, you know, she married into the right family. <laughs> so I want to show you first this um, bobbin holder because when I was out at Baby Lock in August, they had a little, um, this was for the trade, it was for the Baby Lock dealers, and I was teaching some workshops for the dealers, but they also had like a little uh, vending area for different vendors who have products that, you know, quilt shops carry and, and um, sewing machine dealers carry. And my friend Rhonda Pierce from Schmetz Needles, and, and many of you have met Rhonda because she does vend at shows across the country, she was there and she says, oh, you've got to see the new bobbin holder that we've put out. So I'm like, okay. And so what the neat thing is, is sometimes, here's their, their round bobbin holder that Schmetz puts out. It's called Bobbin Savers. Grab It is the brand. Uh, you'll see the name Grab It, but that's from their company. And they're um, pliable. And these rings, these rings, they're a couple different colors. They come in, they've been out forever and they hold, yeah, I had to count. They hold like 25 to 26 bobbins. I say 25, 26, because I don't, I like to have them a little bit loose so that I can actually get my finger in there and get them out so I can move them around, but you could jam another one in there. Applicators like to put their applique thread on these and then put them in their travel bags, um, you know, so that they can have a whole bunch of colors like this without bringing all the spools along. So it's a really great way to do that. But what Rhonda said is that they have the new square one. Ta-da! And so you might see this, you might think, oh, round square, it's just whether you want round or square, or whether you want like a hole in the middle, and you know, what good is that anyways? It's cute, but you know, what's the difference between round and square? Well, well, this is what Rhonda told me, and <laughs> I am now passing it on to you, is that the square ones hold a lot more bobbins. So you can get, I had to make notes here, You there's, there's six, let me take it out of the package. Do I, do I even open this? See, I knew about it, but I didn't open it because I was saving it to show you. So let me just cut the top there. So the, I think they may come in different colors too, but I got to pick red, of course, right? So, whee! 
So here we go, and they're they're pliable, you know, not as pliable, but you can see you can open, you know, but there are six channels, and each of these channels holds 10 to 11 bobbins. You can cram 11 in there. That means if you just put 10, 10 times six is ding, 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 60. So you have 60 bobbins versus 25. That's huge. Like you, it, and they don't look that much different. They're practically, the same size. But because the round ones have a lot of space that's not used, these take every single bit of that square space up with the bobbin holding. So that if I wanted to put these in here, let's take a look. So if I wanted to put these in here, you know, I can just fill it up. I'm not gonna do the whole thing. I'm just gonna do one row. Ta -da. And then if I wanted to jam another one in there, I could. I got a lot of tails going on there, don't I? So there, I could jam I could jam all of those in there. But then I find that a little, it's, it's not bad. I mean, I can get my finger in. Oh, is there room for another? How many got in there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, that's ten. Okay, so you can get one more. Whoop. So I can get the eleven in there. There we go. So that's eleven. But then to get them out, you know, especially if this whole thing was full, I'd almost have to pick the end one out, which I could get easily and then shift them. But if I wanted to just have it looser, I could just put 10. I mean, 60 bobbins versus 25 is is quite a good deal. So this is a container. I'll put a link uh, down here wherever you're watching this, but you can just go over to my website and I'll have it all over there. So I'll have all the links uh, over there. But I have been wanting to show you this for a while. It has been here sitting out in my rolling assistant waiting to show you. <laughs> so uh, I didn't want to, I just think that it's really great to find nifty tools, things that are simple but make our lives easier. Like you could stack a bunch of these, but for me, I don't know. So tell me, what kind of a sewing person are you? Are you the kind of person who has a lot of bobbins? Like, do you wind just a little bit and then keep it with the thread? Do you just have a zillion colors out there? Or are you someone who winds a limited number of bobbins? Maybe you'd use a limited number of colors because you just do a lot of patchwork and you, you know, so you don't have a lot of colored bobbins. So you can just keep, you know, a dozen bobbins and that's fine. You know, I'm sort of in the, uh, an odd camp and I, I'm curious how many of you do what I do because I don't like to have a lot of bobbins wound up. It just, I've just never been like that. I usually keep this one ring and I actually have two rings. I have a second ring, but it's not as, it wasn't totally filled up. And then I also, on top of the machine here, will keep a whole bunch of bobbins just sitting on the top that are sort of the colors I'm using and I can just pull them out here so I don't have to go down into the drawer here of my koala table. So you can see here, like this is a, this is a door that opens. I don't want to push everything off, but that's the door that opens, uh, you know, a shelf rather. And then underneath I've got drawers. And so, you know, for, that's where I, I keep these and lots of other stuff. So it's easy for me to just keep a few up here, but I don't like to have a ton because what I'll do is I'll just use them all the way down. And if I'm using three shades of green, let's say to do applique, I will generally in the bobbin just try to use up something that's green if it's close enough. If there's a couple shades difference, as long as my tension is good, I'm not going to see that uh, that bobbin thread. So I can just use up the greens until the green is gone, and then I actually will piece with colors. So that if I have a little bit of you know pink, let's say left over from some machine quilting, I will just put pink in with you know cream color for the top bobbin. I mean, for the top thread and then piece with it. I don't need to have the colors the same because uh, it doesn't bother me to, to do that. Plus then, so that way I use up the bobbins and, and I keep them going like that. So I will have only a limited number of them wound up and then I don't keep them with the thread. I just keep them in here. I use all Orifel thread. It's all 50 weight that I'm working with. I do have a bobbin holder for non 50 weight, like, you know, my forties, my 28s, my 12s, not 12, but 40 and 28. So that, um, those thicker threads are, have their own little ring of, of, uh, bobbins so I don't get mixed up because I don't really want different weights uh, when I'm doing doing work. So that's my find and I'm excited to finally show it to you. Yes! 
So let's talk about the UFOs we're working on. And this has been my year to encourage myself first. <laughs> so I'm doing this for me and making myself accountable for working on UFOs. And I don't have a current list. I'm thinking maybe like in December, uh, I will make a list of <clears throat> the UFOs I have out there. UFOs, for those of you who are new, are unfinished objects unfinished objects or objects being projects in the world of quilt makers. Uh, so you hear that word a lot. So I showed you two projects. One was that I got Norm, I, I sort of looked at Norm again. Did I do anything yet? No, this was on Friday. So Friday I told you I got Norm out. Over behind the die cut machine on that table is my tray with uh, lots of Norm parts cut, but not everything I need cut, not to start building like the top, the hats or the, the bodies. Um, I had just done the one to do a test. So Norm, Norm is on my list that I want to get uh, those parts sewn up so that I can just take them and sew and I don't have to sit and do the math. I'm, I'm not, you, I don't regularly um, do Elizabeth um, Hartman's pattern. So every time I go in there, I have to uh, look at the pattern and sort of re-familiarize myself with, with it, which is I'm sure something you have to do as well. So once you start getting into a pattern, you get uh, a feel for the pattern writer's style, and then you know what they're doing and where they're going and what you're going to need and kind of the flow of the pattern. But if you put it down for months and then you go back and you're not used to their style, you sort of have to get in the mindset to get back into it. Plus that book is written, it's a booklet is written so that you cut a lot, you cut it all at once pretty much and then sew. And I have to go back into that mode uh, for the Norman Nanette blocks. Okay, so that's, I do wanna do that. I, I just think it's a darling qu uh, quilt. There's actually still kits, so I'll link down to that if you want, love it. You know, it's just so darn cute. Um, so I have to have to do it, I have to work on it. The other thing is I showed you my alphabet blocks from, that I created to go with the, my Dear Jane blocks from a million years ago. So these are the alphabet blocks. This stack is done. I blanket stitched them last night. I know, so you can see on that one, the blanket stitch. So I blanket stitched these last night. I got how many? Two, three, four, five, six, seven. I got seven of them done. And I think I have like six or seven more to do. T through Z, this is a one that was a leftover that was appliqued. So these are five inch blocks from the Dear Jane. And I showed you uh, these on the last fireside chat when I talked about my Dear Jane project for all you Janiacs out there. So I'm very happy because this is doable. So I have on my machine right now, on the Solaris, I put on my applique foot. So you can see it, that's the foot I'm using for the applique. And I have it on here, I have red thread. So they're all getting quilted with the same red thread. And all I have to do, it, I just unthreaded it. <laughs> Taking the foot off, I unthreaded it. Oops, do that, put that back. So I, I can work on that. So like tonight I could, I could do them. I could actually finish them. And then all I have to do is set the blocks side by side. I might need to make a square or something for, you know, I have to see the spacing, but I am super excited to have gotten that far. You know, it's sort of like you get to the halfway point and you're like, yes, yes, I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> you got that feeling. It's like, yes. So tonight I think I'm going to finish up appliquing those blocks. They've been fused down, waiting their turn for more years than I want to say. I don't even know how many years. So that is going on there. That is my project for the UFOs. Now, speaking of that, which is a small extension, not necessarily UFOs, but sewing every day, uh, 10 minutes, sew 10 minutes you can sew at least 10 minutes. You know, if you do something, maybe you can't sew, maybe you can cut, maybe you can reread a pattern to be ready. Uh, you could sort your fabrics. Uh, you could just tidy up, tidy up your space uh, get it ready. If you've got an old project, like I have, I have the main street, this stuff still in a, in a bin and it needs to be cleared out and put, make that bin available for a new project I'm working on, not the old project. So that's the kind of thing I could do in just 10 minutes time, get that organized, 
put this stuff where it's going to be. So be sure you're trying to do that every day. It is amazing what you accomplish in just that short period of time. A lot of people find they do it when they first get up in the morning because maybe they can get up 10 minutes before their family if, they're, if their energy level allows it. Me getting up 10 minutes in the morning to go so is not a reality. <laughs> <laughs> who else is in that camp like I get up 10 minutes early I just want coffee 10 minutes early and to sit I am NOT a get up and so early person uh, <laughs> but but I know a lot of you are uh, mine would be trying to you know because I work at home and I work in my office for me you know this whole space here is where I am all day long and all evening so for me if I'm on the computer over there my 10 minutes is to fire this up and sit down and actually do some stitching as I'm taking a break. Get up from the, get up from the computer, walk around, uh, take a break, cut something, do something for a project and sit back down. I do that occasionally, I need to do a lot more of it. That's one of my future goals to be able to do. All right, so we did some sew alongs. Let's get the status. I've gotten my basket. This is my basket for winter fun. And we've done three blocks. Yay! And I'm going to try to get the layout to you for this Wednesday. I'm not promising, but I'm hoping. I have to write it. So there is the hot chocolate block. Remember, it's a winter fun. They're just fun things in the winter. They're not seasonal. I mean, they're not holiday things. They're just fun things in the winter, fun winter memories. And uh, they don't look like with the story is just to go with the block. So this is having hot chocolate. And we did skating and we did building snowmen. So there's a, a lot of fun things we can do in the uh, in the winter. Okay, let me just stick this back over there out of the way. Okay, we're also moving along on the winter wonderland blocks and behind me i'm going to move here is the quilt can you believe it what i did over the weekend yeah i'm so excited is that i put the top together i did all my photos for in between because we only have two more blocks we just did i'm going to zoom in here so you can see it and i think this will work i tested it earlier down at the bottom there is the little cottage block see it that is what we did this week from the book and then is the snowflake and then is the present and then is setting it but you can see that the setting you should be working on that you should be having your sashings you should have rows done because we're doing only two uh, two blocks a month and we're putting you know one block early in the month and one block later in the month so two blocks a month so you have plenty of time to have you know been doing this um, and that way you'll have a finished quilt. Yay! So this is, there's still some kits. So if you love this fabric, which actually looks incredibly similar to the book, I just couldn't believe we found a fabric line that is so similar. It's really darling. But I'm gonna show you, the, the book has other things in it too. Like, let's see, let me just show you real quick. So there's a really pretty, uh, um, block with a sort of a Nordic Nordic sweater looking block and there was uh, there was another cute one here's one with this got some really cute trees isn't that darling and so the book has got tons of stuff besides this sampler it is just the sweetest thing and I love the Scotty dogs wait a second let me find it real quick oh here they are this tree skirt with the Scotty dogs you know, so there's lots in here besides just the sampler on the front. And that's what, you know, that's, it's worth the price of the book. Right now, I found the book at Connecting Threads for 40% off. So remember, if you use my links, you help support my family and we so appreciate that. We so appreciate supporting our our small, our small teeny tiny family business, uh, Greg and I. But I try to find you the best deals whenever I can. And so Connecting Threads is running all their books at 40% off right now. So I will put a link here. You can pick up my books. You can pick up Winter Wonderland. Um, I'm not sure what all you know, you're looking for, but if they have it, it's going to be on sale right now. So yay. They don't always have the very newest books, but they have a lot. So our other, uh, so along now I don't know whether you're doing this or not but if you are yay because it is fun 
I have the Perfect Five. Let me get this stuff out of my, I'm using these bins. You've seen my bins. I'll show you again in case you're new. These are my bins that I keep the projects in. So I've got the Perfect Five project in here, and that is a, a new book. Uh, so it's not over at Connecting Threads, but I'll link it to you at Fat Quarter Shop. It's a Fat Quarter Shop book. Here's a new book. There's a Perfect Ten book, which was using layer cakes. Perfect Five are, are how many quilts? Sixteen. Yes, yeah, sixteen quilts uh, using charm packs. And then there's a, a ruler. You don't have to have the ruler. You know, obviously it's a five inch square, but uh, you know, you have five, you have other markings, but it is so cool. I just love the way they put the markings because the markings work with the pattern. So you don't really have to do a lot of thinking. It's pretty, it's pretty nifty. So each of the patterns in here is named for like a cookie. Let me just show you one of them. So, whoop, hold on. Okay, so, <clears throat> so here's a, here's a block. And that's a block, and that goes to this quilt. And that quilt is called what? The Pizzelli. Pizzelli, is that how you say that? That type of cookie? Well, what, we're, what they're doing is a um, sew along to make one or two of each block and put into a sampler, which I think is a great way to experiment with the blocks. So I have done, I'm using uh, the pepper and flax fabric here which is the yellow and gray and green and then my bonnie lane fabric in the charcoal color so here are here are the four we've done so far this one is so cute the whole quilt of this is darling it is so darling and it's in the book but what i like is that when i just do one block uh, and they're they're actually like a unit here is actually this but uh, the little instructions that we have for the sampler says to put four together. Uh, so that's what I'm doing as I'm sewing along. Because I like to test them out and see, was this a fun block to make? Is this something that I enjoyed? Would I want to cut up other charm packs? Do you want to make, cut up a charm pack and make a whole quilt of it? And I think like, yes, a lot of them, yes. Uh, but this one was just so, is so cute. Uh, it uses much more of the fabric, so you can see a bigger piece of the fabric. Um, and then here's a lot. Here's another one we did. Now this one did an alternating big square. The actual quilt in the book has these side by side, but in the sampler layout, this is the block. And sometimes you need two of those blocks if you're actually going to put the sampler together. I am just doing one of each and then I'll see how it goes. <laughs> I'll see if I feel like doing any more. You know, that's uh, probably not because I have a lot of other stuff going on. One is enough, you know, or one based on what it would look like in a sampler. And then I'll just put those together and make like a lap quilt and put a border on it. And that'll be uh, maybe not even border. I might just make a lap quilt. Depends on what size it ends up because I just like trying it out. It's a lot of fun to be able to just do those one blocks from the book. It's such a good, it's such a good idea. Okay, one other thing for our, the sew-alongs is we're doing now Bonnie Lane like uh, for this is the table runner so I'm doing actually videos with this so you can go to my YouTube channel and see the videos uh, this I think it's Thursday I do it yeah I will have um, quilting this with your walking foot and I am uh, quilting on the jubilant over there so let me just zoom over there so you can see the jubilant a little better. So that's the jubilant up on the, on the table. There we go. And I am going to use that to quilt this uh, with the walking foot, which actually just came today. So I'm ready. I'm going to get it basted. And then there on the table is glow. That's the first block for glow, which is the lap quilt. So along. And there's kits for all of these, so and they're all with my Bonnie Lane fabric. And then after these two, we'll be doing the Drive Down Bonnie Lane, which has the big car. So next week, I will talk about that a little bit. And I have the car made so that you can, it's just like worth it to make it for the car. But the houses are big too, they're just so cute. Everything is so cute about that one. So that'll be using my fabric. Um, of course you don't have to, you could buy just the pattern and use your own fabric, you know, that's, that's totally fine. Um, but I appreciate when you use mine, you know, 
have to say it. Um, so hey, if you uh, have not subscribed to my YouTube channel, uh, click down in the corners here. There's like a, if you're at YouTube, there's a little pop-up. Uh, if you're watching this at my website, uh, it should pop up there. If you're watching this on Facebook, then you need to go over YouTube to subscribe. So, and then when you're, once you subscribe, click that little bell, ding, and then that will send you a notification when I have a new, um, a new thing. So, you know, I've done a few, uh, pop in videos. I've done a few more of them on my Facebook group because they're only like two to three minutes long and they're not always something I want to just stick up on YouTube. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but I have put several of them up there. So if you're subscribed, <coughs> excuse me, you'll get a notice when that goes up there. So it's really good to do that. It's really good to be subscribed. <coughs> so I asked a few, um, I, I asked on Facebook for a few questions. It's uh, I thought I'd do a little Q and A, and then I have uh, a book I want to show you, which I'll be giving away. Yeah. So, so here's Q and A. So Lisa said, Lisa L asked, is it okay to put borders on the sides of the quilt to make it wider? So you've got a quilt, whatever regular size, you know, whatever the pattern said, and then she wants to know, is it okay to make the sides of it wider? She said, because her husband, <laughs> this cracked me up, just her husband likes to wrap up like a burrito and take the covers. <laughs> He's a cover hog, I think. He's a cover hog. So. <clears throat> you know, it is fine. It is fine to make your borders wider. I think if you look at old quilts, there were a lot of antique quilts. You know, if you look at antique quilts, they were often made to fit the bed and to fit the situation. They weren't necessarily always made to be like magazine worthy. No, they're being made to use, to be used. They have weird cutouts for the poles on the bed. They sometimes have really sh short pieces at the top, like a border, like a note border at the top. And then they would have beard covers. They would like cover it with other fabric because the men's beards would scratch the quilts at night. I personally have made short borders at the top and longer borders on the sides and the bottom uh, because I would push the quilt up under the pillows and I didn't really need all of that extra. I needed the length, you know, the certain length. So I think it's totally fine. It's your quilt and you are going to put it on your bed and you're not going to, when you look at your bed, the visual you see is what? The top. So do it. Let us know. Let me know. Um, so Heather L asks, what do you like to watch or listen to while sewing? She likes to listen to recorded books and she says she mostly likes Renaissance romances. So I am like the, the, I'm very strange when I work. I like to work in quiet. In other words, silence. You know, so if I'm working, I, I have nothing, no sound. Uh, if I'm uh, sewing where I'm not really having to concentrate, I'm not having to, you know, process anything. Uh, really, it's just kind of mindless stuff like, you know, machine quilting would be one thing or sewing that I already kind of know what I'm doing. I will listen I will sometimes listen to a show like um, 99% Invisible or uh, Fresh Air with Terry Garr, um, or I listen to music that doesn't necessarily have words or words that I understand. So like salsa or, um, you know, or sometimes I listen to beach music, peppy stuff. I don't know. I don't have a big playlist. I'm not that, I'm not kind of like a music person. So, and I, I do not like books on tape. I cannot concentrate on them. I lose interest really fast in them. And then my mind goes off and does something else. And I have no idea what they're talking about in the book. And so, uh, it's just useless for me to listen to a book. Even the shows are hard. Sometimes I have to stop them. If I start doing something where I'm concentrating, I have to stop the show so I can concentrate and then start the show back up again. Like, uh, you know, so it's really hard, a book. I could not, I just can't even imagine listening to a book on tape. So <laughs> that, I wish I could, but you know, maybe someday, maybe someday I'll try it again. Okay. Let's see. Uh, here's another, another fun one. Rita asked, 
um, because I'm talking about tidying up and everything, she said, did I come from a very tidy family or was they, my family kind of normal or were they more messy? You know, so like, what's the dirt, right? Right, Rita, what's the dirt? <laughs> so I actually came from a pretty tidy family. You know, I look back on it. My mom, um, she is, she doesn't need things. Uh, she's never really been a thing person. My dad likes things more than my mom. My mom, my dad has a lot of things now, but when they were, you know, when I was growing up at home, the amount of things were pretty minimal. Um, and I think that's a huge part of my mom's influence. You know, they did, we lived in Europe, so, you know, they did buy things there be that they wanted, you know, to uh, remember their experience of living there. But uh, our house was not cluttered and we didn't have a lot of trinkets ha around my room had more trinkets you know I did not fall from the same tree as my mom when it comes to that I come from my dad's mom's who was like the decorator granny granny had to have all kinds of things decorate for the seasons change it out have a whole basement of stuff that's me you know if I had a basement that was would be what it looked like so I would say my my home our home was probably really tidy uh, except for my room and my brother's room <laughs> so, because I can remember my brother's at one point in his uh, young life, uh, all his possessions were actually on the floor of his room and his closets were empty. And my mom just would close the door. That was the, <laughs> just keep Mike's door closed. <laughs> that's <laughs> oh. So that's, that's kind of where I came from. So I have a few more questions. I'll save those for next time because I want to talk about scraps my friend and I have a bunch of clips in here so I can show you some pictures my friend Lynn Harris uh, has I think one of the best scrapbooks around uh, she is a beautiful designer um, if you haven't looked at her website I, I, I didn't look up the exact name of it it's red hen I'll put a link I will put a link. Well, Lynn Carlson. It's now like the little red head. What little red hen was the name? But it's now Lynn Carson. LynnCarsonHarris.com. So she has um, just the greatest style. So in her book with scraps, this quilt on the front, these tiny little stars are an amazing quilt. Little, they're little bitty stars. But she likes to not get rid of anything. She really likes to keep all the little pieces. So for those of you who are scrap quilters who love to keep all the little pieces, Lynn speaks your love language. You know, look at this. Look at this picture here of a bunch of blocks in progress. Isn't that gorgeous? She's also a beautiful photographer. But she shows you how to do scrap quilting. So like this is string piecing. So each one is like a technique. So there's on, on the other side over here, rather. Goes through string piecing. And then she has other sections where, like this quilt is uh, string pieced. And this layout is, is really neat, but the fun part about it is that Lynn shows you a bunch of other layouts for that block. And so even though, yes, you can play around with your, yourself, but it is so inspiring to me to see somebody else's thought process about using up. And these are to use up all those tiny little pieces. Here is her Stardust quilt, uh, which is all these little bitty, bitty stars. Isn't that amazing? It is so gorgeous in person. Like I would just love to do that. I've, so there's, there's 434 stars in her quilt. Uh, and, oh, it is 87 by 99, so it's a good size quilt. And there's she's going to walk you through the thought process of, of using up the scraps. And she talks about keeping them. And there's, there's uh, things like this, which she's a bit of a minimalist in her designs. They aren't, you know, you see a lot of space. And I thought this was fabulous because if you have um, some good quilting skills, this lets you use up just a bunch of, you know, scraps for half square triangles and then give yourself some space in the middle. This in a smaller scale, this is 41 by 41, so it's really not that big. And a smaller scale, you could actually put that on your, your dining room table, you know, in the middle. And then you could put things on it and you could have this, you know, really beautiful, really beautiful piece. Well, I'm giving away this book uh, and somebody, somebody will be able to enjoy and meet if you haven't met Lynn yet you'll be able to get introduced to her work and start following her 
She's incredible, just incredible. She does some teaching on the road, so you can always find her schedule at her website. Um, and last week's winner never, never, never checked in. And I even wrote back again, they didn't check in. So I'm gonna give this away. It's gonna go to somebody else. This is a whole stack of Darling Christmas fabric uh, from Bunny Hill. So the question this week, and you have to do the question at my website, okay? Not wherever you're reading this, unless it's at my website. <laughs> it's just, you have to put it all in one place because otherwise I cannot go all over the internet finding it. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay with our tidying up uh, theme. So leave me a note and tell me where in your home is the, is the spot, <laughs> the spot that you need to work on. What do you need to tackle? Do you need to sort of keep on top of an area of the kitchen? There's like always kind of that spot, everything gets dumped you know, by yourself or your family. Um, you know, I'm just as guilty as having that one spot that dumps everything. Uh, also in our sewing rooms, we have that one spot, like mine is over there that area i could clean it every other day because i will go and stack things there uh, so i want to be sure that i don't keep doing that and it's, it keeps straightened up huh? so that's what you're going to tell me on my website what is your area that you need to keep tidy what is the one that you need to tackle um, or what is the one with the worst the worst place at the moment it might not be always that way but at the moment it is maybe inside the door you've got a table piled with stuff or your desk maybe you have an office desk at the house and you know it's out of control so yes that's it uh, <laughs> so if you're if you haven't uh, found me over at Facebook uh, if you're new I'm at quilt along with Pat Sloan and we have a huge wonderful international community there and uh, chat and show all kinds of quilts that they're making and so I love it I love you guys I love seeing everything that you do I love that you come and visit this uh, just makes my heart happy to see you sewing and quilting and making new friends over in my community uh, over at Facebook. So thank you so much. I will catch you online.